Hey, what's happening guys? My name is Achiono and welcome to episode 13 of Game Programming. So, yesterday we um, took a look at this pixel and we actually got it to, to work properly. And this time, um, you know, today I promised that I'd teach you guys how to, uh, how to make a timer and how to actually keep track of, um, of things that don't necessarily have to happen every CPU cycle, like the update method. Um, because obviously that needs to happen 60 times a second. So not like as much as possible a second. So that's what, that's what we're going to look at today. That's creating a basic timer. Um, now this is not going to be an FPS counter. It's simply going to be a timer. Okay. So there's a bit of a difference. Um, I'll probably do an FPS counter tomorrow. Okay. There's, yeah, you'll see. Okay. So in the run method, I'm in the game.java class right now in the run method. Right, just before we actually begin our while running loop. So again, what's going to happen is the once the game starts, once the thread starts, the run method is going to be called, and immediately what's going to happen with that is it's going to do, you know, whatever's here. So in this case, right now, it's just going to jump to the, into the while running loop and just do this infinitely until we end our game, or you know, until we set running equal to false. Um, so it's not going to go any further than that. If we type something in here, like it's going to do that when we close our game, basically. And that's kind of useless to us. But if we actually put code over here in between the, in, you know, at the start of the method, it's going to execute this code once, and then it's going to go to the while running loop and loop whatever's in those brackets. So when we first start our game, when we first initialize our game, we want to actually set a few variables and create a few variables. The first variable that we're actually going to do is create a, a variable to actually store time. So there is a, a way, a format to actually measure uh, the, 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 the system's time. So in terms of, um, you know, almost like to, to measure like every CPU cycle so that we actually know, you know, which point in time our computer is at. Um, and then we can use that to, for example, time how long it takes us to render something, um, ensure that we don't render anything above a certain number per second. Um, all sorts of, all, all, all sorts of uses for that. So, um, yeah, but we actually need to retrieve, you know, that variable that actually holds the time. So it is a long, okay. Um, because it's a very, uh, long, <laughs> I guess it's cause it's a very long thing. Obviously the long is, um, lo the, the long variable is just a very, very, very big number that, um, is very, um, you know, long and big and stuff. Um, we're just going to call it, uh, last time because it's going to be like our last time. You'll see, you'll see what I mean in a second. I'm going to set that equal to system dot nano time. Um, now there's two way to me there's two ways to measure this. There's system dot current time millis, which is like the system dot current time milliseconds. Um, that that's in milliseconds. This is in nanoseconds as you can, as you can imagine, which is very, 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 very precise. And it's much better to use this than it is to use uh, current time. Um, milliseconds. Although in some cases and in, in this timer as well, we, we will actually be using um, current time uh, in milliseconds as well as, as nanoseconds. So this, what this does is first time we run our game, it just sets whatever our computer is currently at in terms of time to this last time variable. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually create a double uh, or, or a, a variable for actually converting um, integers, uh, sorry, not integers, for, for converting milliseconds into nanoseconds or actually vice versa, converting nanoseconds into milliseconds. So um, I'm just gonna, um, we'll make it final because we're not gonna change it ever. And we're just gonna call it, um, well, actually we could change it technically, but um, I'll do that in a second. It'll be double and we'll call it NS, just that just stands for nanoseconds. And that'll be like our nanoseconds conversion thing. And we'll set that equal to one billion. So one and then nine zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and then, you know, that, and we'll put point zero to ensure that we're actually in double precision here. And we'll simply divide that by the number of, um, well, this isn't, that's obviously the conversion here, but what we want to do is we want to, um, what's a good way to put this? What we divided by is, is how many times we want, we want to actually run our update method because you'll see the math sort of come together at the end. I'm sort of looking forward here. Um, the number that we put here, which is going to be 60.0 in our case, basically what this is going to do is when we actually do divide it by nanos, by NS, by this variable, um, we'll be 
essentially setting, um, you know what, I, I can't, it's really hard to explain this without actually having code on the, on the screen for you guys to see it in effect. So I'm just gonna continue writing this right now. Um, the other thing we need is a delta variable, which again, you'll see in a minute, you'll see that in action in a minute. And that's pretty much all we need so far in the, um, in the, in, you know, in the preliminary run method without, you know, outside of the, uh, outside of the loop. All right, um, so what we need to do here is actually create a variable, another long called now, and we're gonna set it again to system.nanotime. So now you might be thinking, um, you know, you've created the variables, they're both equal to the same thing, what's up with that? So the deal is when we first run our program, when the game first opens, we retrieve the computer's current time, right? Uh, in, in nanoseconds. Now, while, when we're running, obviously by the time it's completed all these lines of code and actually gotten to the running loop, um, the system's time is gonna be different because it doesn't do this instantly. It does take time, even if it is a very small amount of time, it still does take time. Now the best way to actually, um, the best way to probably uh, demonstrate this is if I just hit return here and um, just so it gets out of the method and I actually just run this, it's gonna terminate. Hang on. Um, so I'll print now, followed by, okay, so last time plus that. Um, and I don't know, I'll just do like a comma. Okay, so that's gonna print the two variables onto our console. And um, over here, I'll just call the stop method so that we actually stop the program. Okay, so right now, you can see that it's printed two variables over here. Um, and these, this is actually the system time in nanoseconds. I'll zoom in a lot so you guys can see this. This is the first one, this is the second one. As you can see, the second one is actually quite a bit larger um, than the first one. That's because it's actually taken time to get from this variable to this variable, okay? Because this code gets executed, then this code gets executed, then this code gets executed, then this code, then we get to here. And we've actually been able to measure the distance. Now we can measure this distance precisely if we simply put now minus last time. And if we measure that, we can be like, oh, all right, it took that much time. Now that's a very small number. Um, and in fact, I'm not even gonna bother working out what that is in an actual tangible uh, measurement like milliseconds, but um, that, is how, that, is, that is how long it took. Um, in, in nanoseconds, okay? It took 2,680 nanoseconds to actually complete that operation. Um, now, using this theory that we can actually measure how long it takes to do things, we can, we can actually um, measure, you know, the amount of time that we actually have to spare. So if I cut that and we, we get back to our normal, um, our normal stuff, uh, what I can do is to the delta variable, I can actually add onto it. Now plus equals means that I'm actually just, plus equals is the same as delta, equals delta plus, and then, you know, what, whatever we put, you know, what, whatever number we put here. Um, plus equals does the exact same thing, but it's just, it's just a shorter way of writing it. <clears throat> okay, so delta plus equals, now minus last time, here I am again measuring, Measuring um, the 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 time that it took. Uh, I'm uh, okay. You get this, I assume. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm adding to delta the difference between these two variables. So in other words, the time that it took to get from here to here. In this case, um, it'll obviously change later. Um, and then I'll divide it by nanoseconds. Our nanosecond variable. Now, what what this is going to do is um, again, onto delta, it's gonna add on the difference here, and it's gonna divide it by one billion divided by 60, which when we actually go over here and say, while delta, oops, is actually greater than or equal to one, which will only happen 60 times a second, because remember we've set 60 over here, um, then we're gonna update, so I'll get rid of it here. And we're actually gonna just subtract one from delta. So that we, we get it back to zero essentially. 
or um or you know whatever it is so <clears throat> read this code analyze it and i'm sure you'll find out exactly what it does it's just simple maths so again what we're doing here is we're creating a variable uh, actually i'll explain this loop thing now what, what's going to happen and let's get rid of actually we should probably keep stop here we'll keep the stop method here just because um that's going to ensure that if we do get out of this running loop for some reason it's going to stop the program which is which is good now okay so oh, i'm so tired today i'm really sorry guys I, just, I had a huge day today i can barely understand what i'm writing here um <clears throat> And I have to like run off to an exhibition right now as well for art. So, well, for artwork, for my artwork actually. So I probably shouldn't be late to that. Sauce and half an hour. Um, but okay, let's try this one more time. <laughs> so last time is gonna be equal to the computer's current time. Our nanoseconds variable is gonna calculate um, a value, which will be this, so that we can then divide the difference by it to achieve our delta variable. This now variable is gonna get the current loops, um, current time, because what's gonna happen is obviously it's gonna get to the end of this loop and then go back, and then this now variable will be updated. Um, oh, we actually forgot one more thing, and that's actually to set last time equal to now. And again, what, that, what that's actually gonna do is, um, you know, after it, after it actually uses now minus last time, it's going to update last time, and then it's going to calculate the time it takes to um, complete all of this. So it's going to calculate the time that it takes from us to get um, from here all the way back up to uh, up to here, and then it's going to calculate that distance. So um, let's do it. Let's do it this way. I'll demonstrate it quickly. So we'll create a boolean called um, C, we'll set it equal to false. Um, and then what's gonna happen is at the end, we're gonna set C equal to true. And then over here, I'm just gonna put, <clears throat> if C equals true, then let's just render, um, oops, out the print line. Then let's just render, uh, sorry, let's just print out um, time taken, and then we'll calculate last time minus now probably. Okay, and we will actually return. Uh, let's just, um, let's just, Exit the program straight away. Okay, so um, this is temporary code, by the way. Don't don't bother writing it down. I'll delete it at the end of this episode. Um, just before it does this, actually, I can't. Oh god. Okay, so um, hmm. Let's just run this. That's wrong. Okay. That's because it set this equal to now. Let's do that here. So if we run this, what it's actually going to do is give us a negative number. Yay. Because it should be now minus last time. Again, sorry, I'm really tired. <laughs> okay, so now we can see that, okay, this whole thing, to update our game and to render our game, it took us this amount of time. It took us that many. What is that? One, two, three, one, two, three. 50, 55 million nanoseconds it took us to actually render one frame onto the screen. And using that basis, we can not only control how often we update our game, which is gonna be 60 times a second, but what we also uh, control, we can also figure out that okay, if it took 55 million times, uh, sorry, if, if, if it took 50, 55 million nanoseconds to actually render one frame, we can be like, the game is running at this many frames per second. Although it's not technically that calculation, it's more of a, um, let's calculate how many times it can actually render per second, okay? So using that basis tomorrow, we'll actually create that, um, that uh, FPS counter, okay? I'm sorry, I'm so tired right now, you guys have no clue. 
but um, I did promise one episode per day. So take all this code down and you will be, I'll just delete the stuff we don't need. Take all this code down and, um, and you'll be sweet. So don't worry. Yep. All right. So um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Later guys. Mm -hmm.